yogurt friends uh no drink in this video we're still sipping on the drink that i made in the last video i definitely am taking advantage of some time that i have so i'm going to do some double feeling filming okay so this is going to be <laughs> where i left off with my perfume collection this is going to be the ease okay so this is all the designers um, I ask <clears throat> all of the fragrance houses that begin with E that I have in my collection. I was kind of um, at a not knowing what to post first when it comes to these because um, since I was gone, I definitely have gotten some more fragrances over the last, what, seven months that I was gone. And so some of them begin with the letters that I have already mentioned. But what I'm going to do is just go ahead and continue with where I left off and I guess maybe do a recap somehow at the end or, or whatever. I'll figure it out on how to include the other fragrances um, that you guys didn't get to see included in the totality of my perfume collection slash declutter. Okay, so what I'm going to do or what I've been doing, continue doing in these videos is to mention everything that I have and get rid of the things that I know that I'm not going to use anymore. Um, and so we're just gonna get started. I, I hope I'm not gonna talk too long about these fragrances. Um, sometimes I get caught up, but yeah, here we go. Um, the first one is by a house called Etro, and this is called Shantung. This fragrance, uh, I definitely love. This is a fresh, green, watery rose with just a hint just a hint almost like if you were to think that you see something out in the corner of your eye you kind of i kind of smell the incense in this fragrance every once in a while i'll kind of get a, a whiff of an incense um smell my wrist not smell anything but rose but it's clearly there it's almost like a ghost around me you know and it's not there all the time it's just like i said if you sometimes you, you think you might see something out of the corner of your eye you're wondering what it was or what you saw that's how that incense kind of comes in and out of this fragrance very very beautiful this fragrance has gotten me compliments from women um older women and definitely a, a younger woman as well um this fragrance projects so be careful about spraying too much uh, for me, I spray, I, my spray routine, the way that I spray is very moderate to under spraying, you know, so I wear a lot of fragrances to work and um, I try not to over spray. I think the most is probably about six or seven sprays. And even with this, I think that was a little too much for work because it definitely pushes out, it projects. But if you love a watery red rose with some green, and like an incense ghost, <laughs> definitely check out um, Etro Sheng Tang. So, so fresh, so beautiful, perfect for spring and summer. I love a rose, uh, fresh rose in the summertime, in the warm weather. It really somehow just cuts through the heat and added musk to it. Mm. It's beautiful. So another kind of a segue into a musky rose. And this is a white rose. This is one that I really haven't worn. It did something. The musk kind of did something to me and it kind of turned me off for a little bit. I actually bought this fragrance from a sample. This is Aloria and this is water. So this is lemon and white rose and musk. Okay. So I um, had the sample and it smelled just like a, a lemonade almost, like a musky lemonade. I definitely like lemon. I know that some people feel like it's cleaner-ish and I can understand that, but I like that. I don't think that it smells like a cleaner, but I definitely get the tartness. I definitely understand why people would say that, but for me, it doesn't bother me. I don't associate it with that, but I understand. Anyway, let's see. I haven't sprayed this in a long time, so I'm not sure what that musk is going to be doing. If it is feeling kind of harsh the way that um, it was when I first got this bottle, and maybe it was the white rose as well. Um, it feels a little bit different, but if it's that way, I don't think I'm going to keep it. We'll see if it comes back to what it was in the sample. Mm-hmm. That lemon is like a, like a lemon drop, the candied lemon drop. So still tart, but with a hint of sweet. Oh yeah, it, this is nice. I'm gonna keep this cause that's what it's smelling like to me. Um, like a lemon drop with some rose and some musk. So this is, maybe it was newer and it just needed some time to sit, but really I hadn't worn this for a very long time. So maybe it's had some time to sit and get back to that sample. The reason why that I purchased it. The reason why I purchased it. So. This is staying 
oh, this is gonna be perfect for warm weather. So definitely, um, if you're if that sounds good, check out Aloria. And this is water. This is really the only one that I liked from that collection. Maybe the iris one, the earth. I like that one as well. I think it was cardamom and iris. But um, this is the one that I chose. Um, this is uh, by um, Elysian. This has been in my bathroom. I kept it in my bathroom. That's why the tag is a little bit warped. But this is an x straight. Yeah, this is an x straight. So this, so the idea behind x straights, if you don't know, um, they have more perfume oil. Um, and the, the idea is that they last longer, but because they're oil, they're supposed to sit a little bit closer, not project out, because the alcohol is what kind of pushes the fragrance out because it's evaporating into the atmosphere. And the oils kind of keep it lasting longer, but closer to your skin. This somehow doesn't follow that rule and it pushes. This is a very strong fragrance. This is Charmante by uh, Elysian. And it's a very kind of um, fruity, bubbly type pear fragrance. Um, other fruits in here as well, I think, but it's almost, I think they're, if I'm remembering my, right, there could be champagne, pear, and some other fruits, but it's very, that that i mean i couldn't describe it any other way that's exactly what it reminds me of very fizzy pear kind of sweet um not overly sweet but definitely fruity very very fruity so just think of a mimosa you know it kind of reminds me of a mimosa maybe good for brunch you know mimosas and brunch go hand in hand um or wherever you want to have that type of kind of good time feeling definitely this would be fitting. So yeah, that is Elysian Charmante. Very nice and fresh and fruity, sweet. Um, I have one by Electimus and I talked about this one, uh, I think in my very first fragrance video back. Um, this is Electimus and this is Vixair. And this one is so, so beautiful. It has like a a, a citrusy musk, but as it develops, the musk becomes more warm and patchouli is in here Ooh, pressurized very nice we like that um yeah it all blends so nicely i think it is the the musk is so it's not an astringent musk it's a warm musk and i, I wonder if it's the patchouli that makes the musk warmer um not a dirty patchouli it's just very beautiful you have to like powdery fragrances because it's very powdery as well so like a powder, <laughs> a powdery, citrusy, warm, musky patchouli. I don't know if that's something that sounds appealing. It might be something that you have to get your nose on. But for me, who someone who really loves, um, I think you can see it, someone who really loves a powdery, musky, citrusy fragrance, I'm very sensitive. I will say I'm very sensitive to patchouli and it has to be done in a specific way. Um, so if it's well blended, soft, um, and not kind of like aggressively overbearing, I can tolerate it. And I have come to love those types of patchouli fragrances. So um, like I said, it's in there, but in very small doses, noticeable, but it plays well with the other notes. So that is Electimus uh, Vixair. Really, really nice. Um, would I wear this in the, maybe summer, maybe nights? I think this is a, a moderate temperature fragrance i can't see it being worn like in the hottest of days maybe summer nights because that patchouli it almost feels like it's one of those patchoulis that might feel a little humid um i don't know if you guys have ever experienced that but sometimes patchouli can give me a feeling of of wetness of humidity so it's really interesting and and maybe this could work on a summer night um but yeah anyway that is uh, Electimus Vixair. Okay, so I know you see all of these Elizabeth Ardens up here, the green teas. And I think sadly that I'm probably not gonna keep many of these, um, maybe just one or two. Um, in my last vi video, um, the haul, I talked about fragrances smelling like a body mist. And what I mean by that is not so much that they smell juvenile or anything like that. What I mean by that is 
that it smells like it has a high concentration of alcohol. So it's that and that smell just kind of stays throughout the whole fragrance. I don't mind a lot of fruits. Um, I don't mind a lot of sweetness. I love those things. Um, but when it's it doesn't feel like there's a lot of perfume oil to kind of cover over that alcoholic smell um, or like that very very clean white floral smell i think that can smell like a body spray as well i'm just trying to make a point about body sprays what i mean when i say something feels or smells like a body spray it's not the um the notes but rather the feel of the alcohol level in the fragrance so moving on we will talk about green tea and cucumber and i was getting to the fact that a lot of these smell like they have a lot of that alcohol that high alcohol content even if you're just smelling from the cap. Um, this one, I get definitely get a lot of the cucumber. And I don't know, I don't know if I, let's see. This one is not bad, actually, very refreshing. And a little bit sweet from the tea. I don't know the other notes. Actually, I might be changing my mind. Am I being greedy? No, I, re I think I do like this one because I don't get that uh, high level of alcohol like I was talking about. Um, I plan to get rid of most of these, but now um, this one, I might keep the cucumber. Okay, um, let's see here. The next one is green tea and mimosa. Let's see if I made myself a liar. Let's see. Yeah, this is probably not one that I'm going to keep. Um, I get it here, but also I don't really uh, like the mimosa. I got a lot of these because the bottles are just so cute. Um, and they're inexpensive, of course. So you can get a lot of them without really breaking the bank. Um, but this one I don't think that I will keep. I'm going to go ahead and turn away the green tea and mimosa. Oh, and we'll come back to it. Um, what I was planning to do with a lot of these fragrances is post them on my Mercari. Um, so I will do that eventually and I will let you guys know when the fragrances are there. Um, but this is also so that you can kind of see what's going to be posted there and maybe be ready when I decide to put them up. Um, but this is Green Tea and Nectarine Blossom. Let's see about this one. Mm, I wonder if my nose is getting tired. It doesn't feel very strong. Um, I don't know about this one. As for now, I think no. Let me try again. I don't want to kill my nose for the rest of the video. It's not very strong. As far as I can smell right now, I'm going to try it again later. But I think based on what I'm smelling now, this one is going to go ahead and go. Um, let's see here. This one is the original. I know I like this one. This is one that definitely doesn't give me that, um, that overly alcoholic vibe. I actually really like this one. I haven't reached for it in a very, very long time. But this is so easy to wear. Really, really nice. I'm gonna keep this one, the original. Uh, the green tea and jasmine, I think I know that I'm gonna pass that one um, along. Mmm, although that jasmine is really green and really florally sweet. Um, hmm. I might go ahead and keep it. That would be nice in when you really want to smell very feminine and be cooler in the have like a sense of cooling and like a breeze of florals running by you in the in the summertime. That would be really nice. Um, the green sheet, the green tea cherry blossom. Let's see. Mm, I don't think I'm feeling that one too much. I'm gonna go ahead and pass that one along. And you know what? These are um, some of these are really cool. Are, I think you can do obviously with any of your fragrances, but if you are looking for like a quick pick me up, you can store these in your fridge and put them in your bag on your way out. And you know, hopefully, it'll stay kind of cool throughout the day. And if you need a refresher, 
you know, it's it's light enough to where you could just spritz it on and have it use it as a way to keep cool. Maybe during the day. I don't know how long it would stay cool, but I mean, having it in the freezer or the fridge for overnight, I'm sure it would stay for a decent amount of time. So that's an idea. Just using them to kind of freshen up a little bit. Um, green tea and camellia. I know camellia is a, a white flower. I know that um, that's the Chanel symbol. That's neither here nor there, but just some randomness. Yeah, it's kind of a, I'm not gonna keep that one. It's very floral, but kind of um, very green at the same time. Uh, I can't say very floral and very green. To me, it feels more green than floral. Um, and I think I'm gonna give that one away. So if you like a green type of fragrance with some tea, um, that might be one for you. I absolutely love white tea. So I'm definitely, I know that I'm gonna keep that one. Um, white tea is like woody, citrus, clean. Um, absolutely keeping white tea. Green tea and lavender. <laughs> there we go. Mm, now, some people don't like lavender, but I, I do like lavender. And this would be nice to... Um, lavender is an aromatic. I think I, I missed... I think I lied when I said I don't like aromatics. I do like aromatic things. I like lavender. I like mint. Um, I like aromatics in certain doses. So I'm going to keep the lavender. <laughs> and the green tea and honeysuckle. Honeysuckle I like because it's sweet. I don't know if my nose is getting tired or if I can't really smell it that well. Um, I'm not going to put anything up on my Mercari that is not, um, I wouldn't want to buy myself. So if, if it's not appropriate to put up, you just won't see it there. So this is another fragrance by Escada. It's called Fairy Love. I remember really not liking this fragrance um, because again, the musk in it felt very harsh. Um, and this was just like a pickup. I was at Ross or TJ Maxx or something like that. And I saw the cute little bottle. Um, let's see here. It's candy-like. I don't... It had a hazelnut note, I think. Um, I can't remember all of the notes, but it, it smells very sweet, as the Scottas do. That's what you can expect from them. But um, mm, this is something that I think I have a lot of. I don't need to keep this, so I think I'm probably going to pass this along. And I'm not sure if these were limited editions. Sometimes the Scotta comes out with things that... You can't get again um, but this is very this is glass here um, and you take it off and spray like that this is plastic here so you kind of sit it like this um, so yeah that's that probably not gonna keep that um, so next these I'm just gonna gloss over these because I already talked about these in the last video this is Amir um, vibrant orange and neroli this is Amir mango punch Okay. This is a mere pear potion, very Jolly Rancher like fragrance uh, with pear and apple and sweetness, very a candy sweetness. This is more so like a orangey um, cotton candy musk type laundry fragrance, very clean, tart, and a little bit with the with a little bit of sweet musk. Okay. Um, this is Emir Identity Con uh, Oud Crescent. This is a, a fragrance that is very unisex. Um, it has a, a strong rose and violet and oud leather. Um, definitely leather in this fragrance. Um, very unisex. I said that this would be an occasional fragrance for me and even though it would be occasional, I'm not sure that it was something that I felt represented me. Um, so I think that I'm going to pass this along. It's a really nice fragrance, um, but I just don't feel like I would be reaching for it a lot. It was a blind buy. Um, I just wanted to see. It has raspberry in it. So I was looking for a oud fragrance that had a lot of syrupy raspberry. I was hoping that this would be it. 
um, but it, it has a lot of powdery violet, some raspberry rose, and that leather, so, and, and a little bit of woody oud, so it's not strong, it's not animalic, nothing like that. Um, it's just a very, if you, you've got to like a leather fragrance though, because it's definitely in here. Um, but I think that it's mixed well with the other notes as well. Um, nothing, not definitely not as sweet as the Oud Satin Mood, probably because of that leather in there. Um, but some of the notes are very similar, so you might have a slight idea of what it smells like. Um, yeah, so I'm going to pass this along. Very heavy bottle, cap is weighted, not magnetic. Um, if It's a dupe for, um, uh, not Ramon Monagal, Frederick Mal, The Moon. So if you're looking for that, if you, you know, didn't have the money to afford that, this is, uh, haven't smelled the moon. I can't say that it's a great dupe, but I know that it, it's a good quality fragrance. So passing that along to somebody who will give it more love. Um, again, same thing with this one. I was looking for a beautiful syrupy, sweet raspberry, uh, covering some oud. This one is, um, Loire Despo, Despo, Despois. Let's do that. Loire d'Espoir um, by Amir. Okay, and this is Ambre. Loire d'Espoir, Ambre by Amir. And this is a uh, dupe uh, for, said to be a dupe. I cannot confirm. I haven't smelled it. But Ambre Nomad by Louis Vuitton. Um, this is definitely a raspberry oud with rose mostly smoke though when you first spray it and into the fragrance you definitely get a lot of smoke um that rose that raspberry really mixes well with the rose so i cannot say that it's a the raspberry is is very prominent in this fragrance but those two things tend to go very well together raspberry and rose um and so um the the smoke dies down a little bit but it's always i think it, it wears throughout the fragrance so you definitely have to be looking for something that is very smoky animalic the oud in here is um animalic to me i mean it's not gonna mm, i don't know how other people are gonna perceive it i really don't know if other people are going to be able to to tell that you that that smell but for me it's clear when i spray this fragrance um the more and more i smell it it's not as strong um but i don't know if my nose is just getting used to that so you have to just beware and you have to know what you like this is definitely not my scent profile so i'm gonna pass that along um i think that people can even though if you you have a, a you know a big collection and you you know you have a lot of fragrances you can still have a fragrance style even though it's varied uh, for your moods you know that's how i use my fragrances for moods and occasions and i like a lot of different notes but i feel like my signature scent <laughs> is all of my fragrances because i feel like if somebody really knew me they could say okay that smells like something that jamila would wear um, even though there are many different fragrances. So I think I have a, a fragrance style, even though I don't have a signature scent. What do you guys think about that? I don't know, put it in the comments. So just a thought. But the next house um, I have fragrances by is Ely Saab. Um, this is Girl of Now Shine. This is the one with the pineapple and the orange blossom. Um, it's powdery, it's like a powdered candied orange blossom. I can't say that I necessarily get um, get a direct interpretation of a pineapple here, but this fragrance is so, so smooth and sweet and nice and it's strong. For me, it's strong. I, I wear maybe two or three sprays if I'm going to wear this to work. Um, I feel like an, I can smell it, especially if it gets on my clothes. I can get hints of it throughout the day so i don't want it to be overwhelming i get a sense that this is a strong fragrance so if you're looking for like a sweet candied orange blossom kind of powdery definitely definitely beautiful fragrance um, i'll be getting more use out of that um, i also have elisa um, in white equally as beautiful this is more tart um, this has berries in it again orange blossom i think it runs through the whole elisa collection so I, I'm a lover of Orange Blossom. That's always gonna be a fragrance that I like. Sometimes it's more on the fresh side, sometimes it's more on the candy sweet side. 
I like it all. I think it's a beautiful flower. So um, this is more ambery with some um, berries and that orange blossom. I've even worn this in the hot heat, the heat like humid. Oh gosh, and I think it's tart at the top. It's so, so beautiful. And so those, those berries, I think it is possibly, kind of take it down and kind of suck the kind of cool, have like a cooling effect, even though it is floral and ambery towards the bottom. I think those berries stay pretty strong throughout the fragrance and keep it from getting overly sweet. So that's what makes it, uh, made it easy for me to wear in the hot, hot weather. So definitely a good one. Um, this is just a 30 mil. I would say that if this were out, I would def or if I ran out of this, I would definitely repurchase. I, I think Ely Saab is one of my favorite houses for sure because of that orange blossom that is their signature. Um, and I think if you care, you know, Francis Kirk John, I don't know how many of these fragrances he did, but I know that he's done the original Ely Sobs, um, the Le Parfums. Um, I'm not sure if he's done the other ones, but anyway, this is Le Parfum Intense. This is a sweet, like a honeyed sweet orange blossom with some patchouli. Um, I think this is a very sensual fragrance, um, kind of brings people, people notice and you leave a good scent trail with this as well. I used to call this my man getting perfume. <laughs> um, I think it's just, it's very attractive and I've gotten compliments from men while wearing this fragrance as well. So this is Elisa Le Parfum Intense. I don't think that you can, mm, I won't say, I'm not sure, I haven't looked, but I know at a, a certain point in time, this one was kind of scarce and people were just buying the other one but you might have luck I, like i said i haven't looked for myself so it's the intense le parfum um the other one the original parfum it just doesn't have that patchouli note in it so it's just a, like a sweet honeyed orange blossom or maybe the patchouli is not as prominent um but that is a patchouli that has that that kind of humid feel that i was talking about or that i do talk about um, this is Elisa Le Parfum Le, Le, Le Couture, okay? This one comes green, um, but as time goes on, it loses that green color. Um, definitely some sweet orange blossom with some bitter green almond, and I think there might be a little vanilla in here. Um, I think my nose is getting tired, so I'm going to try. Yeah, I'm not picking this up. A whole well there it is it's faint this has that powdered almond um, smell so just think of um, how can I say it's a sweet powdered almond on top of some sweet orange blossom so this is not overly sweet but it is definitely a sweet almondy floral okay so that's that this one has gotten me some compliments there was an uber driver and he was so so cute but anyway um he complimented me on this one this is Ili Saab the resort collection um and this one has a note of uh, let's see it's still that orange blossom base of course um but I think there's some either some frangipani in here I'm not sure if there's any lang lang in here but pomegranate is in here so it feels kind of juicy um a little bit tropical a little bit sweeter because of that yellow flower um, and this one projects out as well. So very, very nice. I love the juiciness of that pomegranate. And I feel like it, it dies down, but it kind of stays at a certain level throughout the fragrance. So another very, very beautiful one. These are older fragrances, but I think you can still find them. Um, I think there's a blue one as well. I've never smelled that one. But anyway, this is the one that I have. Really beautiful. Um, and I've gotten the Ely Saab the rose 01 it's called essence number one and it's rose i know for sure that this one is made by um francis kirk john and people were saying that this is a gothic rose it's very dark and um <laughs> people i think it's so interesting how people interpret fragrances because my nose doesn't feel that at all what i feel is that this is a very powdery rose so it's almost like um i think there's is it oh pressurized we like that um yeah so this rose is sweet almost like there's a possibly a violet in here uh violet has like a 
a candied sweet tartness to me. Um, I often don't like it, but if it's done and if it's blended well, I can I can tolerate it. And, and if the, the composition is filled with other notes that I really like, I, I can deal with it. This one, mostly what it reminds me of is like a powdered, candied violet rose with some freshness. There's some freshness to this fragrance for sure. Um, and I think there's a little bit of vanilla in here as well. But all in all, when this fragrance uh, dries down, it kind of reminds me <laughs> of, of baby lotion. And the funny thing about it is that I looked up um, the notes of baby lotion and it said rose and vanilla. So I don't know, um, but that's what my association goes. So it, it's very, I feel like it's more of a clean powdery rose. So that is Ilisab Essence number one. That's my <laughs> interpretation of it. Um, yeah, that's that. Um, and the last house that I have and the last two fragrances that I have for you are by a house um, called Ex Nihilo. Um, these are really beautiful fragrances. This is called Explicit. This is one that is a, like, uh, nutmeg is one of my favorite notes. Uh, definitely get like a smooth, I like it because it is that, it's smooth and it's creamy and it almost has like a vanillic feel to it, but it's like smooth and spicy and creamy. Um, yeah, it's a, it's my favorite spice in fragrances. So in addition to that, there's some soft, smooth, creamy sandalwood. So this is a very mildly spicy, smooth, soft fragrance with, um, some peony in here. So yeah, peony. So <laughs> peony, uh, in here. And I don't know, I think this is just uh, beautiful to wear. I think this is a fragrance that is versatile. You can wear it wherever. Um, yeah, I really like it. I, I like sandalwood. You have to like sandalwood because I feel like that is a very prominent note in this fragrance. The peony is just something in the background that lifts it up a little bit. Um, definitely uh, there, but it's not a main player. I think it's mostly about the sandalwood and the soft, soft spice. So sandalwood love it so this is also um by ex nihilo this is called um oud vendome okay my letters are coming off it's because of the oils you know on my hand or whatever but this is a very beautifully smooth almost berry like fruity like oud very smooth uh really nothing Maybe just like a hint of animalic and it's not, mm, I don't want to sound weird, but it's just like covered by this, by the fruitiness. It's like a syrupy, almost spicy, like oud with fruits. Um, but it's just so smooth and it's very beautiful and it almost feels like a chocolatey feel. I mean, it doesn't smell like chocolate, but if you think about it and, and if you just kind of smell it, that's where my nose went. Um, that's what my association with this fragrance was. So it's very smooth, very syrupy, very sweet, um, kind of fruity-ish oud. And I think it's really, really nice. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's all of my ease. Um, I think this one is worth trying. I keep saying it's, it's expensive, but it's worth trying out if you can get a sample um, just so that you can see it's not your typical oud. So very beautiful. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for joining me uh, for my fragrance collection and declutter. So I did get rid of, well, I'm probably going to get rid of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fragrances. Okay. Um, and I'm keeping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So, keeping twenty of the E's. Um, again, thank you guys for being here. I hope you have a good night, and I'll see you in the next one. Love, Jay. Bye bye.